What is going on gaming nerds? Mystic Nightmare here and I am bringing you a tutorial on the on-screen icons as well as the user interface on Russian Fishing 4. Let's get this party started. Okay, as you can see, we are out jigging on Ladoga Lake. Now, I decided to go ahead and start jigging because, to be honest with you guys, I figured if I'm going to be talking about this stuff, you guys might be a little bit bored. And if you're a little bit bored, then I might as well put some fishing in the background. On top of that, I'm doing it because basically I need to hold a rod the entire time we talk about... Um, Ooh, hello. There's a trophy. Look at that. Awesome. Um, yeah, the entire time we talk about the icons because I have to have, you know, I have to have a rod in my hand to actually get these up. If I put the rod away, then guess what? The icons go away and that's not going to help you guys at all. So I'm going to change this out real quick. I've heard recently that this one is doing really good. I'm actually looking for a trophy um, Xander out here. And as you can see, I'm out on Ladoga Lake. Uh, just doing a little bit jigging. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. I had a request from a gentleman that hangs out in the chat that I hang out with. Um, he goes by the name of DW. Or is it DM? It's actually DW, I do believe. And because, I mean, if it was DM and I talked to him, then I'd be sliding into his DM. And I don't want to be sliding into his DM because that's just disgusting. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so to start off with, let's talk about the icons above the tension bar at the very bottom. So we're going to start from right to left. And the first one is a triangle with an explanation point in it. Now, this one is your, oh crap, something's broken. You need to fix some crap on your rig. Now, this actually will only activate when it actually only activates when you're holding a rig that has something that's over 50% wear on it. Okay, so if you were to go back to the starting area of the cottage pond and you were to get a free um, vintage yatka, then and you were supposed to and you were to equip that on a rod, you would have to pick that rod up, um, and then it would let you know, hey, something on this rod setup is broken. So what usually happens when ooh, there's a nice little char, uh, it usually happens when something is over fifty percent or 50% or over on your damage. Now, if you really are having a hard time finding what is damaged, this is kind of the best way to do it. Go into your rod setup and then see this little cog icon right here? Click on that. And what that does is it shows you how damaged everything is. As you can see, I need to consider my lead guides, my lead guides on this rod right here because they're down to 19%. Usually nine times out of 10, it's gonna be your friction brake. So this is the one that you wanna check right here. I just barely repaired mine, so mine's only down to 0.1%. But you can see all of the damages right here. So if you were to pick up a rod that has something, it could be your line, it could be your leader, it could be your pole, your rod, your pole, um, your reel, and that is going to have about 50% or more wear on it, then that far right icon is gonna go off and that's when you need to go and repair something. The next icon to the left of that, which has the kg or the kilograms on it, that has to do with your tension on your rod compared to how heavy your bait or your lure is. So for example, if I go into my rod here and I look at my rod, it's, you see the test right here? Did I say tension before? I apologize. It has to do with your test compared to how heavy your weight is or your lures are. So my test is 25 kilograms, uh, is it grams or kilograms? It's grams, duh, it says right there. 25 grams to 100 grams. So if I'm in between 25 and 100, then I'm fine. And not only including that, if I'm in between these two, then I can really toss out a very far cast with the lure or the bait that I have on. If I go, if I'm below 25, say I'm at 24, then I'm still okay. But you guys need to understand that if you're below the bottom of the test, the bottom minimum amount, which on our case, in our case is 25, then it's going to start affecting how well you cast. More than likely your casts are going to be super short and you're not going to be able to really get your cast out there. Now the problem comes with this icon and the, kilogra and the kilograms on it when you're... 
when your lure is too heavy. So for example, if I pull out my, where is it? Uh, my linear 60, this is my Belay, Belaya um, setup. If I pull this one out, I'm fine. That kilogram icon doesn't come up. However, if I put an overly heavy, if I put an overly heavy lure on it, so if I look at my test and it says uh, two to 10. So if I put a 12 on it, which is heavier, let me see if I can find a 12 gram. Here's a 17 gram. I'll put that on it and then I pick that up. As you can see, the kilogram thing has gone off, the kilogram icon. That means that every time you cast, as you're using this, it is doing unnecessary wear on your rod and reel. So this is something that you want to watch out for. For a really good cast, you want to make sure that you're in between your test amounts or below it if you don't mind having a shorter cast meaning if you're like in a river and it doesn't matter if your cast is a little bit short that's fine but if you're on a lake and you want to do a far cast you need be to be between these two numbers but if you're over it then you're actually doing damage to your rod and reel every time you cast i don't know if it's every time like as you're reeling in i don't think it is but i think it's at least every time that you cast it causes damage to your rod and reel okay so the third the third icon is your snag icon plain and simple now there's a problem with this icon there are what's called ghost snags in the game now ghost snags usually happen at Olberg or anywhere with a lot of vegetation especially if that vegetation is lining the ground or the floor of the lake or river that you're fishing in and you can't see it so when you go to reel in and it snags officially the game recognizes it as a snag and that snag or that hook icon will show up on the screen now here's the thing when that icon goes bright and it lets you know hey you're snagged that's when the game mechanic changes for you to allow you to get your snag unsnagged meaning you can just right mouse click and that'll do a hard jerk on your snag and depending they've actually just changed it when they updated the game depending on what your tension is you the higher your tension is the higher chances of you releasing that snag is going to you know is going to help you out is going to be there for you uh, however there is also something else in the game where it's called a ghost snag and you are snagged but the game doesn't recognize that you are snagged meaning it's a ghost snag so that's a problem because that icon doesn't light up okay and when that icon doesn't light up the game mechanics don't change to where you can just right click and jerk on it real hard and have it try and actually loosen the snag so what you have to do is you actually have to hold control and then you right click which does a hook setting action this is actually how you're supposed to hook uh, set your hooks on some of your fish and, and i'm doing it right now and as you can see that's that's how you can kind of try to get your ghost snag released um, another way is to be very careful and lock your reel now before i say this the way that you know if you have a ghost snag is, is if you have a fish on the line that's just super heavy and you press r then what it lets you know is you can't change your retrieval speed because you press R to change your retrieval speed. And it'll if you've got a fish on, it'll tell you you can't change your retrieval speed because you have a fish on. That lets you know you actually have a fish on. If you are snagged and it's a ghost snag, there's a very good chance that when you press R, nothing's going to happen. All that's going to happen is, as I'm doing right now, your retrieval speed is going to come up. And if you're reeling and you're not able to actually get your, you know, your your reel is sounds like, you know, a fish is on it and it's pulling line and it's cranking and it's not actually, your line's not actually coming in, then that's actually a ghost snag when you press R and it doesn't tell you you have a fish on. So the ghost snags, like I said before, you can left click or right, or I'm sorry, left control or right control, and then right mouse button at the same time. And you can do a jerk and try and pull that snag out. The second way to do it is be very, very careful when you do this. You can lock your reel by rolling all the way forward, friction brake locked. When it's an infinity like that, it's locked, okay? You can lock your reel and slowly tap in your left mouse button, 
meaning you're slowly rolling in your reel. So you're going to be going like this. See how it taps like that and I just slowly move? If your tension bar slowly increases and goes into the red, you need to stop, unlock your reel, and then just Alt F4 or just log out. That way you can keep your gear without actually having to cut your line. However, if your tension bar stays in the green and doesn't raise as you're clicking left click and you're slowly reeling in, then just keep doing it until the snag is released. But like I said, be careful. If it starts to increase and it goes into the red, then unlock your reel and just Alt F4 out because you're not gonna be getting that bad boy out of there. And last but not least, you can actually try, if it's like a, a bait or a feeder fishing scenario, then what you can actually do is you can actually just hit enter, which if you guys didn't know, hitting enter releases your reel, and then hit enter again, and then puts your rod down. And if a fish comes along and takes your bait, then it'll actually unsnag you. And that is a possibility you can you can use instead of just logging out. I've used it a ton on Oldberg and it works great. The next icon is your heat icon. It's got the little fire in it with um, what looks to be braided line wrapped around it. That little icon lets you know, hey, you, this fish is taken off like a bat out of hell. It's heating your brake up. Your brake is too tight. It's heating it up and it's heating up your spool. Your spool heating up heats up your line and it makes everything weak. So when it goes, I believe it's orange. I'm colorblind guys. I don't know the actual colors. I believe it's orange first. And then as, it, as the fish keeps running, it'll turn red. Okay. And when it turns red, that means you're doing about four times the damage that you normally would do to your rod or to your reel. Okay. So you're doing a massive amount of damage. Now, the best way to deal with this is by one putting down your rod if you're trolling or in a boat putting down your rod pressing j and starting to troll and then picking up your rod again and chasing down the fish that will actually loosen some of that line and it will cool off your line so that icon will go off the second thing that you can actually do is just lower your tension. If your tension's at 29 and this fish is running like a bat out of hell, you're not stopping it. You're not going to stop it. So you're going to have to roll, roll back your tension, if you will, and or your friction, I should say, and lower your friction. And what that's going to do is it's going to take some tension off of the line it's going to take some wear off of your brake or strength off of your brake and it's going to loosen your brake a little bit and it's going to make it so it cools down okay and when you do this you want to make sure that the line your tension bar actually you lower your friction to where the tension bar goes below your lowest two lines at the bottom of your screen okay so let's go ahead and talk about the next icon in the series which to the left of the fire icon or your heat icon is the line icon now basically this is exactly what it looks like it's a spool of line it is your real spool and it's how much line you have left on your icon now it's very simple to figure out the white icon around or the white line around the icon means that's how full your spool is of line if, it's, if you've got half of your line out, then that white line is only going to be, is going to be half full, okay? However, there is a little something that you kind of need to be aware of, and this kind of confused me a little bit at first. I didn't understand why, but now I do. If, let's say your spool can hold, oh, 600 meters of line, but you've only got 300 meter uh, spools of line that you can put on your reel, then that line isn't going to be completely full. You To fill that white line up, you would need 600 meters. Okay? So, basically, if, you've only, if your reel can hold 650 meters, whatever, of line, and you've only got a 350 meter spool that you've put on there, then that line is only going to be half full. And it's scary because when you're fighting a big, heavy fish and you're thinking, oh man, my line is half gone, it's not you've actually you're actually at your max 350 spool but because your reel can hold 600 meters it shows that it's only half full so that can be a little bit confusing so take that into consideration 
Now, the mysterious icon. Yes, I know you've all looked at this icon and go, it looks like a heart. But it's not a heart. And it's to the left of your line icon. This little shield or this little fat heart looking icon is actually a clipping icon. Now, what am I talking about? Well, when you go to fish, usually feeder fishing or even uh, float fishing, and I'm going to reel in this this line so we can show you if you hold control and then you press plus and minus it starts clipping it starts a clip okay so when you go further up in the clip as you can see that icon has lit up that means you have a clip set on your rod and reel meaning it's a shield icon that that shields you from casting too far so as you can see i've got a clip in and then i go and i class the full clip it's going to stop it boom see it stopped it right there because i have a 35 clip on so basically that's what that clip is and your your lure has to be out of the water for it to go on and you have to have clipping on okay and hopefully i don't catch a fish as i'm reeling super fast in and breaks everything I need to take this down to 35 but as you can see I've still got the clip on so the icon is now lit up and that's what that is that's all that that is okay now let's talk about another little mysterious icon that's on the screen if you can look down at the bottom right which I'm sure you guys can if you have eyes there is a little dot on the compass a little white dot Okay, now that little white dot is very mysterious. Almost nobody knows where, where it came from or what that thing is. All right, if you look at the very top right of the screen, it says there's a wind coming from the northwest or a wind blowing northwest. That is what that white icon on the bottom right compass is. It tells you the direction of the wind. Okay, now there's a lot of confusion when it comes down to this. Some people say, oh, well, if it says it's coming from the north, or if the wind is blowing northwest, it's actually not blowing towards the northwest. It's coming from the northwest. Then you got other people are saying, no, if it says northwest, that means the wind is actually blowing northwest. It's blowing towards the northwest. It's hard to tell which person is right, but if you look at the waves on the water, which way do they look like they're blowing? Northwest. So take this how you guys want. I just go by the waves, but that icon lets you know the direction that the wind is blowing and it says it's blowing to the Northwest in my opinion. So that's what that little white icon is. It tells you either it's blowing from the northwest or towards the northwest. I go by the waves and I I believe it means it's blowing towards the northwest. But there's so many posts in the chat that are in the, the, the RF4 forums that say that it's blowing from the northwest, meaning it's blowing southeast, which I don't believe that's true because as you can see by the waves, they're going northwest. So that's what that little white icon is in the bottom right. Okay, decided to do a screen cut because it was turning into night. It is now daytime. If you look at the right hand side, the compass is over there. But if you look above the compass, it says 13 out of 100. What is that thing? It is so mysterious. That icon, ladies and gentlemen, is your keep net icon. If you fill that up 100 out of 100, congratulations, you have a full keep net and you are the awesomest person in the world and most importantly, the awesomest fisherman in the world. Let's talk about the tension bar at the very bottom of the screen. This long wide bar is your lifeline. It lets you know how much tension you are actually putting on the fish compared to the weight limits that are on your rod and rig. How does it do that? Maths, ladies and gentlemen, it does it with maths. It takes your rod load capacity, your reels mech weight load capacity or drag weight, I don't know exactly which one. It takes one of those off of your reel. It takes your lines weight capacity as well as your leaders weight capacity does the math on them and then lets you know through the tension bar how much tension you're putting on the fish and how close you are to breaking all of your gear basically so if we started the tension bar in the center and we move outward the first two bars that you see are okay 
You can go over those, you can go under those. If you go under them, you're doing zero damage to your rod and reel. If you go over them, you're doing a little bit, not a big deal. If we go out to the second set of bars, that is what I have nicknamed the no-no bars. These bars are your red bars, meaning if you go over your red bars, you are doing four times the damage to your rod and reel, mostly your reel, okay? Now, I have had people argue till they are blue in the face with me that this is a good thing. They say, well, you're putting a ton of tension on the fish. You're tiring them out twice as fast as, as fast. I like to just ride the no, no reel or just be barely one step above the no, no reel or the not the no, no reel, the no, no bars. When my tension bar goes red, I'm telling you right now, guys, you're doing four times the damage to your rod and reel if you do that. And I've had people actually argue with me that that's a good thing. Now, there are times when you're going to do this, when you've got a big, huge, fat cat that you can't lift into your boat, then you may want to go above the no-no bars. But when you're actually fighting, it's probably not a good idea because you're doing four times the damage to your rod and reel mostly your reel. Like I said, I've had people argue with me about this and it's like, why would you want to do four times the damage of your reel? Is the fish that you're fighting going to make up all of that cost that you're going to have to use to repair your reel? That's pretty much the argument when it comes down to catfish. Is that one catfish who's going to completely destroy your rod and reel or your reel at least going to make up the cost of how much it's going to take to repair the reel? No, it's not. So my suggestion is get as close to the no-no line as you can even with the fish bumping and thumping and fighting on you make sure that you just don't go over it and you won't be doing four times the damage if we go to the very end of the line that is your critical failure area okay so if you go to that line you have literally one second to quickly roll back your reel your tension bar your mouse wheel roll it back just like that and get that friction down there as quick as possible otherwise it's whatever the weakest link of your rods rod and reel setup is going to be that's going to break so if it's your line that's the weakest that'll break if it's your leader it's going to break if it's your reel then that's going to break so you literally have one second to max out that tension bar and roll that back roll that mouse wheel back to get your tension down Okay, so let's talk about the far left icons on the screen. As you can see, there is a 27. I am level 27. The green line that is circling that 27 is how much experience I have into 27. The part that is not green is how much I have left till I level again. As you look below the 27, it says 501,000 or 501K out of 1.9 million. That is how much experience I have, which is 501,000. And basically you have to do the math. 501,000 or 1.9 million minus 501K is how much I have left to get to level 28. To the right of that is your, your icons for your health. The top one, which the lightning bolt is your energy. When that goes to the red, your angler will have a very hard time reeling. On top of that, um, if it goes all the way zero to zero with no red, it just empties, you're automatically going to lose your fish, so be careful of that. The one below it with the fork and the spoon, surprise, surprise, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it means that is your food. You eat food, it goes up. You do not eat food, it goes down. Your energy drains your food, and that will go down. The one below that with the heart and the plus sign, that, ladies and gentlemen, is your health. Surprise, surprise. And below that with the sun, that is your comfort. With the sun comes warmth. With warmth comes comfort. Stand by a fire. Stand by a flame. Fart really long and fill your pants up with hot air. It all brings you warmth. I'm just kidding about the farting. When you raise your warmth, your energy goes up. When your comfort, when you raise your warmth or you raise your comfort, your energy goes up. When your comfort is low, you get an energy debuff, which means that your energy will actually regenerate slower. So as your comfort goes up, the regeneration rate of your energy goes up as well. 
and that all has to do with warmth, warmth, warmth. That is why coffee and tea are fantastic because they warm you up. Uh, cocoa does the same thing, but it doesn't do it as well as coffee as, or as coffee and tea. So that's what those icons are. Um, what other icons are we missing? Top left, that is your bait. If you have a, uh, what's it called? A bottom feeder on, it'll show you your bait. It'll show you your, um, your ground bait. And if you have a bottom feeder on that has to do with, uh, uh, carp fishing basically with bollies and whatnot, then the very bottom one is going to be the dip that you are using and how much you have left of them. I would really like it if they would actually put the name of like your lure or whatever up there. It would be nice even in super small letters. I'd be cool with that because instead of just holding this, you have to either go into your inventory and pick your, your rod and reel or press V and then look it up and then tell people in chat what you're actually using. That can be a pain. In the top right of the screen, there's a sun. Why? Because it's daytime. When it goes night, it's well, nighttime below that there is a number counting up that is the time of day to the right of that it says 9.2 degrees degrees well that's temperature ladies and gentlemen and it is in celsius because crazy people use celsius and we all want to be crazy i personally would rather have it in fahrenheit but i've decided to leave it on celsius because well i just want to stay true to the game um and i'm used to using fahrenheit but i'll eventually get how celsius works eventually being an american Below that, excuse me, I almost tripped over my own tongue. Below that, it says West 1.5 mil, mi, miles per second. That is your wind and your wind direction. As you can see, wind is going that way. That's why I believe, because the waves are going that way, the wind is blowing that way, and people that say it's blowing from that direction are absolutely out of their minds, but we've already had that conversation. If you look in the top right, sit down, start engine trolling mode, raise anchor. This is only when you're in a boat. Y to sit down, G to start the engine trolling mode is J. You can double press these to turn them on or off, and raise anchor is K. One of the most important things on this game, ladies and gentlemen, that I can suggest is to press F1. F1 brings up all of your shortcuts. As you can see, everything that makes this game easier to play when it comes down to everything from looking at the current rod that is in your hand and it's set up all the way down to changing your bait quickly with using B or T because it's not B, it's actually T um, and changing your bait out that way. Is it T? No, T is eating b is your b it is actually p <laughs> to changing out your bait everything from looking at your rod to changing out your bait to eating everything is all shortcut and it makes it 10 times easier if you press one and utilize these i wanted to put this in this video just to make it easier for you guys f1 brings this up super easy to learn all of this stuff i highly suggest using it all i'm sorry that i didn't catch very many fish by jigging out here i'm not surprised sometimes they're on sometimes they're off if you like the video hit the like button if you didn't don't hit it just make sure no matter what you do subscribe thanks for coming to the channel and hanging out today guys i appreciate it i hope i helped you out i hope you were a little bit informed if you were hit the like button and also make sure don't forget to finger my bell because that'll let you know whenever I put a video out, you know, it'll give you a notification. You just finger my bell and it'll it'll notify you that you fingered my bell and I put out a new video for you guys. OK, so take care. Keep gaming. Keep doing it at midnight. Have a blast. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.